Hi, I'm Kirsten Jersik. I'm a NRCS technical service provider for grazing. So I work with farmers to write grazing plans for their farms. I also work for a nonprofit called Glacierland RC and D, and I coordinate and host educational field days, pasture walks, and winter workshops with farmers. I'm a farmer myself. I manage our home family farm, Bradsett Family Farm in southeastern Wisconsin. We have about a 300 acre farm and we have about 120 head of uh, beef cattle. We rotationally graze pretty intensively. Everybody moves every day to fresh pasture. We have cow calf, beef herd, birth to finish direct market from our farm. First, we're gonna talk about some just general overall watering systems. There are multiple different ways to achieve the same goal. So we're gonna talk about overall some different watering systems that have worked well on my farm. And then we're gonna wrap it up with the NRCS practices that will help to cost share uh, the overall watering systems and all the different pieces to them. So I'm gonna give you an example on, our, on my own home farm. Um, our winter water runs out of our house basement. So our other systems are all just seasonal systems. So our deep buried water lines come out to our winter sacrifice areas out here. So heated buried water lines just make such a difference um, for livestock in the winter and really for the farmers in the winter. Some people think that when there's snow on the ground, animals don't need to drink a lot. I do not find that to be true at all. When it's really cold, even if there's snow on the ground, my animals do not eat the snow as a water source. They need fresh thawed water. And when it's really cold and really dry and really windy in the wintertime, cattle drink a lot of water. They need a lot of water when it's windy like that out and when it's cold. So the winter water supplies are, are really crucial. This is a seasonal water system, so we have water year-round for the livestock in the barn, which is why we have a heated little doghouse here around the well pump itself, but the pressure tank doesn't have a heated area, um, and it just runs our seasonal water system on these about 64 acres. The main water line is a one-inch water line that runs off of this, and then into each paddock, so every other fence line, has a shallow buried water line underneath the fence line, which is a three quarter inch water line. Each of the fields where the water line runs into, each of those long paddocks has a shut off valve. So should something happen to the water line itself, it can be shut off independently to be fixed. If we we're in a hurry, we could move the cattle to you know a different paddock where they had water, or we could just take the time to fix it. But I do shut the valves off when we're not using these individual paddocks. This is a very back pasture on this farm, so it has no access to electric from any of the farm buildings. So it has always had a solar fencer on it and water was delivered via a water wagon. We decided to drill a well and then put a solar panel on here to power the well pump. The water pumps into this holding tank, um, which is actually just an old bulk tank. And then the water gravity drains through a shallow buried water line into the pasture. So this bulk tank itself is sitting approximately 65 feet higher than the lowest pipe, the lowest point in the watering system. So I really like the shallow buried water lines. Um, they're only buried about six inches below the ground surface. The water lines themselves are then connected to risers, which we attach to the fence posts. Um, we just zip time to the fence post. Every day as we move our cattle, the water can move with them. So one day the water will be on the east side of the, of the temporary fence line, then I can just scoot it over to the west side. Another reason for shallow buried water lines is they stay very cool in our very hot, sunny Wisconsin summers. And so if we have intense sun beating down on a black pipe, that water gets very, very hot, and then the animals don't want to drink it. Prior to putting in the shallow buried water lines in the summertime, I could spend two and a half hours a day with a water wagon hauling water to various pastures. It's like a kind of a life changer on a grazing farm to have water lines in the, in the summertime. I really like these 65 gallon 
water tanks with a float in the bottom. We have some topography on our farm, so if it's on a hill, I can adjust the float to be at a lower level so the water is not running over in the water tank. I, in the past, have used floats on the top of the water tanks. Those obviously don't work on a hill because you'd be losing water all day. And also cattle, just when they get bored, they'll play with things. And so they will play with those and it just cause a muddy mess and your cattle also might be out of water. Water systems that come from, you know, a, a house or a, a pressurized water supply system. Some farms have streams and creeks on them. A lot of farms in northern Illinois and southeast Wisconsin do, I know. So if it is a creek that is a year-round flowing creek, the first thing we need to look at when we're looking at surface water bodies is one, what is the quality of that water? So we need to look upstream to that water source and make sure that that water maybe isn't already contaminated from a feedlot upstream of that water source. Then we need to look at the water source itself and see, is this going to truly be a year round water source or will this only be a water source for, you know, June and August through October? Will this go dry in the, in the middle of the summer when we really need water? I think the next thing we need to look at is if we are going to use a stream as a water source, how are we best going to use this stream so that we are not contaminating this water source with this livestock? So we, what we do not want is we do not want livestock standing in the stream or the creek cooling their nice hooves in the hot winter summer, taking advantage of that cool water and hanging out at the water source itself. So we will need to design fencing so that they only have access to one spot in the stream or multiple spots if that's how, if it's a long narrow pasture and that's how we'll be watering. And so we will need to put in heavy use area or a watering ramp to come down and to be able to have it not be comfortable for the animals to stand there and get a drink, but for them to be able to access the stream so using surface water bodies as a water source is an option. We can also use ponds, but again, limiting in the amount of time that the animal is spending by that surface water source is very important so that the animals aren't contaminating that water source. So when I'm thinking about water on people's farms as a TSP, you know, I'm thinking about proximity of the pasture to the farm. So frequently there'll be, you know, a farmhouse on a farm and there's ample water supply there. And so we can run the water systems right off the farmhouse. Sometimes the pastures are a long ways away from any buildings. And so we don't already have any, any water there. So we're going to have to drill the well. We're going to have to put in a solar pump. Is there topography that we can put in a gravity drain system? So looking at just those different options as to what will be our water source, what will be our power source for our water source? Where will the winter water be? Do the animals all come up to the barns for the winter or do they stay further out? What are the farmer's goals? We can always add on to an equipped contract as well. So uh, frequently we'll start, maybe the farmer only has 10 cows, but their goal is to get 60 cows and do 60 cow calf pairs. Very, very different scenario, right? So they're gonna be expanding over the course of the next many years. So we might be looking at their watering system as, as a three different equipped contracts to expand their watering system to what's going to be appropriate in time. Really leads us to the proper design from the initial system so we can add on to it appropriately as we go. So let's wrap up with the actual NRCS practices. So what we can as technical service providers include in our grazing plans so that NRCS can give producers cost share for those practices. So the water well being one, the water well is practice 642, um, and that is the practice of drilling a water well. So if the farm water well isn't adequate, if there's not enough water in the aquifer, if they need to go deeper, if the farm doesn't currently have a water well, but they have livestock that require water, then the practice of the water well um, is really the first step to the watering system. When we recommend a new well, we can also recommend a pumping plant practice, which is practice 533. And that is just the pump that's gonna deliver the water from the well to the livestock pipeline. So the third thing would be the livestock pipeline practice. The livestock pipeline practice is a 516 practice, and that would be either your deep buried water line to supply your winter water, 
or your surface water line supply your seasonal water or a shallow buried water line to supply seasonal water. So it's important to specify in our plans how many feet of which water line we'll be using. The next practice um, that we can add is the watering facility itself. That is the 614 practice. We can include the water tanks themselves. So the water tanks that are going to hook to the water lines that we'll be moving with the livestock. So I like to include at least two for each group of animals we're going to be watering. So we can have the tank that's going to be in the paddock with them. And then we can have the next tank set up so when they move down to another paddock, the water tank can be full there. So that is actually the water watering facility. And then the last practice um, would be the heavy use area that goes around the watering facilities. So the heavy use area is a 561 practice. And that can either be a geotech fabric with gravel on top of it in some areas. It could be concrete in some areas. So we definitely need that around our high traffic area waters. So our winter waters, our frost free waters, those all need it. Obviously our seasonal ones in a pasture that are going to move every day do not need it. Now if we're designing a pasture where we have a large central water tank in the middle of our pasture, and we have several different paddocks leading into one large water tank, then we would need a heavy use area around the water tank. So depending on the size of the herd, I really like to keep the water moving through the paddocks with the livestock on a daily basis. So in conclusion, when we're designing water systems for farms, it's really important to think about the whole year as a season and how in Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, all across the Midwest, really. You know, our climate changes a lot. And so our watering systems we're using are going to change as, as that climate changes. So we're going to need to think about what are we going to do for winter water? We're going to think about how are we going to provide summer water? How are we going to keep that summer water flowing year round and cool? We need to think about all the different ways we can water the cattle and what is going to be the most effective and cost effective way to make sure we have a high quality water source for the livestock year round on a farm and what's going to be the easiest and most practical way to lay that water system out.